The all-new generation of the Porsche Cayenne is today an auto fuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Today with me with Thomas, exterior, interior and the driving performance will be today in our episode. Biscaya Blue, the exterior color, not quite Thomas Blue, but already a very attractive color for sure, something different. Interior, a lot of sporty elements and the driving experience. Already the base petrol engine will give you a launch control. We will show you that the acceleration, very powerful. And this engine will also be the most relevant worldwide. That's why we're showing it to you today. And beautiful landscape together with this car today on Crete in Greece. Very beautiful place. You can already see the sea in the background and a lot of wind today here. But of course, we will bring you calm elements and of course, Really windy, crazy ones, and everything of that in full HD, full screen, and full X. Let's go! The front looks a little slimmer than before, a little bit more streamlined, bigger air intakes, so overall also a little sportier. LED headlights from standard equipment, then option you, as you see here, the matrix LED, which also have the high beam, which then can leave out certain spots, not to blind, you know, the, the traffic that is facing you. Overall from the exterior, surely more an evolution than a revolution. If you look at the previous generation side to side, you don't see so many differences. Um, you know, they really tried to make subtle changes because the vehicle is already working pretty well. So you also not try to, you know, screw off existing customers. Of course, I would like to hear your opinion if they should have been more daring or if you think that the small design changes they've made that they also please you. 4 meters 92 or 16 foot 1 is a total length now that is about 6.3 centimeters longer than the predecessor version. So you gain some more room, especially in the rear for the rear passengers and 100 liters more boot space. You will soon see that too. Rims 19, 20 or 21 inch. Those ones here are the optional 21 inch and they don't look too big on that huge SUV. Actually, we will soon show you also 20 inch rim that they are, appear smaller even, of course, and um, look really, really small on the vehicle. You can get the wheel arches also with plastic fenders. We will soon show you that also on a different white vehicle. Here they are painted in vehicle color. Again, Biscaya Blue is the color right there. Only the lower part here is then from the black plastic. Other than that, it's, you know, not too much playing around with the design round shades right here there's no distinct design line and also upright windows here the strong porsche shoulders as we know from a lot of different other vehicles as well overall big windows still i think that's good that you also can look from the outside um, sorry from the inside to the outside very well and classic silver roof rails Again, state me your opinion about this design. Interesting also that they now put the rear wheels wider than the front wheels. Um, that is a technology carried over from 911 and should bring you more stability, more sportiness while driving. And also new rear axle steering is available going um, across in slow speeds and parallel at higher speeds. We will also test this new technology when we drive the car very soon. And by the way, fine dust particles, especially in our cities, they do not only derive from the exhaust tip, but also from use of tires and also the particles that 
derived from the brake discs. And actually, there's here a new coating that is reducing those fine dust particles coming from the brake discs by about 80%. So this is one way we can say, hey, I'm driving a Porsche Cayenne to save the environment, right? I'm reducing fine dust by this new coating. So something good for your conscience. Definitely a very interesting technology. And this should also be overtaking for other vehicles because, of course, it makes sense if we reduce fine dust as much as possible from all different sources where it could come from. So when you look at this rear, you might not think about weight savings, but Porsche engineers did, and at least they could lower the weight, approximately 65 kilograms, depends on the engine you pick overall from the vehicle. Visually, it also looks you know, a little bit more elegant, especially also with this glass line running through. It's also an LED light that is running through then um, at night, the moment's too bright to see it right now. And in the lower part, you can see that the exhaust tip, the outer parts are not exactly fake, as we see quite often in industry today. They've just, you know, made it from one piece. It kind of widens to the outside part. I think that is also nicely done. And the top part here is an integrated spoiler. There is also an adaptive spoiler available for the higher uh, trims or the higher engine trims that is then also flipping up. Uh, well, above 160 kilometers an hour or used as an air brake when you break down, you know, from 185 kilometers an hour. But then, of course, that is just a feature which plays a role in, you know, basically only in Germany where you can drive so fast and only on the motorways where you're actually allowed to and when you have the chance to. So for most markets, this adaptive spoiler will not really be effective. What do you think about the new rear? And now let's get inside. We can use the key, of course, open, close, and for the hatch. It's a little bit slimmer than before, like in the new Panamera. And getting inside is, of course, also possible with keys entry. And this vehicle is equipped with the optional soft close, like this. You see, you don't have to smash the door. <laughs> this is the elegant way of closing a door. <laughs> then let's get on the inside. A lot of shiny black elements is used here, but you can also replace them. Those ones are prone to fingerprints and scratches, so I would probably go for another option. Then there's plenty of space on the inside of the door. Overall, the whole door is pretty upright. You have memory seat function right there. Then a nice Cayenne entry cap right there. And then let's talk about the seats. You get two forms, um, the normal comfort seat, and this one here is the optional adaptive sport seat. You can see it here, it has a stronger shoulder part. So you have more side support, and also you can control those bolsters, make them tighter, make them a little bit more loose, like here with, with those buttons, so you can control everything. Um, if you're more a sporty rider, I would recommend those, but in general, if you seek more comfort, I would recommend the base seats, usually, I have more, you know, better experience with the base seats because the sportier seats, well, they look better. They are a little bit sportier than in fast riding, but usually the base seats offer more comfort. Unfortunately, most of the times animal skin is used and the inside, inside parts, outside is in base um, leatherette, but inside is still animal skin. We have to wait for the GTS models, I guess, or uh, you have to go to Porsche exclusive to this program and then say I want you know high class fabric I want the high class leatherette then you can also get the re animal skin replacement but just on request that is missing still with the bigger Porsche models seating position as you know from a large SUV is very upright 
have good view, view to all of the sides. This one is still really a very big SUV feeling. You sit even high in the lowest position. We have a panoramic roof here, therefore the headroom is a little bit limited. I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. If you haven't subscribed to Autogofuel yet, it will be a little bit more without the panoramic roof. But we have it in. <laughs> we have it in mid here. And we have a lot of wind. <laughs> That's Autogofuel live on tape. We have a lot of wind here today. So you see, uh, this was not the soft close, this was the hard close actually. And so Jonas is now filming and blocking the door at the same time. This is really enthusiasm by our cameraman. Steering wheel can be electronically controlled. Takes a while, but you can control it in all of the ways. And then we have turning indicator. Below that is the ACC. And here on the new steering wheel, we have this new drive selector. I will explain that one when we drive the car. You also have this boost button. Then, you know, for sport response, for a short time, you can get a power boost. I usually don't use it. If you're in the Sport Plus mode, then you can even use the launch control, which we will show you the launch control at the very beginning um, of our driving part. This one will be really amazing, which this base petrol engine is actually already capable of. Interior overview, it has the style again, as every Porsche has from the outside, that everything is really wrapped tight, especially here with those horizontal lines, you can see it. This vehicle is equipped with the Sports Chrono package, which automatically comes with the S model, but optional for the base model. And you also get the analog clock, for example. Then the sport steering wheel, again, from your side now. Soon more deals to the instruments as well. They are not all analog anymore. So the only analog one is in the middle part. Sides are digital. You got the new 12.3 inch screen. This one here, really impressive. Also well integrated and it responds really fastly. You can see it here, zooming in like on a smartphone for the map. The GPS does a very good job. And then you have different options here, like you know, connecting your phone with Bluetooth, or it's also possible to use um, the smartphone um, connectivity, my trans music right here. Here in this case, the Apple CarPlay works pretty closely. Uh, as for climate, you can actually do it right here in the system. A uh, lot of different options. For example, where the vents are coming from. This one you have to do in the screen. Uh, I'm not so fond of that. But the rest you can still control in the lower part. And you can have some different you know, car views right here. Um, for the air suspension, which with this optional air suspension, this week is equipped. You can also change the riding height there, for example. So that's about the infotainment system. Then, if we go a little bit lower, this is the new middle console. It's really like in the Panamera. And um, the volume button, you cannot see it that well from your perspective, is right behind the 8-speed converter gearbox. It's a new one, shifting a little bit smoother than before. Then you have those hotkeys here. They are, give you a little haptic feedback. They click a little bit also. Click, click, click. But the scrunching is, for example, usually I want to reach the NAV, the GPS hotkey, and then I have to, from a driver's perspective, like, uh, 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 there. Mm, I'm not sure. So I would have put the GPS hotkey right here, actually, next to the driver, next to climate, for example. Then what I find quite neat, those metal knurled temperature buttons right here. You can use the change the temperature still and the vent power. That one you can still do right here, it's an easy solution. Below that then, if you have it, seat heating and also seat cooling, and it works at the same time. So if you are getting in a rain shower, maybe uh, in, in winter times, maybe also here on camera now is working the seat ventilation, you can, you can dry and warm yourself at the same time, that's good. And below that, when we go to the sports mode, it automatically changes also the suspension, but you can also do it just on your own, click the suspension here, make it stiffer um, due to the new air chamber system. I will explain that one also when we drive the vehicle. Electric handbrake and a small smokers package in here. And below that, adaptive beverage holders. Well done, also fits for bigger bottles. And then the armrest, I'm not sure if we can already get that on camera now, otherwise we have to switch around. Um, two USB ports, see both iPhones mounted at the moment. 
Don't you like my cork cover? It's nice, right? So, and then you can also connect it via um, Apple CarPlay right here, for example. So, actually, everything is rather clean, less buttons than before. This upper part is also very interesting. You can have, for example, the SOS button here, um, controllable buttons, you can put favorites on there. This one here is for the shade of the sunroof. So if you want, you know, driving in very hot climate, it takes some time, but uh, slowly it's coming. You may maybe also hearing that. Here we go. And that's of course very important when you're in a um, rather hot climate. But I think, well, if you're maybe in the Middle East and buy this vehicle, probably you will leave out the panoramic roof completely. And then you can also open it and it is actually a really large roof. So, well, not exactly convertible feeling totally, but you see it's a very wide opening and that leaves a lot of light here in the interior. Also, I like that we have a separate button to activate the camera system. So when I click this one, then the camera system and the infotainment system is getting active. It's a very clear resolution. You have the fake drone view from above. You can also change the perspective here, for example, to a more wide angle view or to the side view that is right and left next to the tires that you can check that you do not damage those precious 21 inch alloys. Well, sometimes people also ask me against uh, practical reasons against leather and you can see here you know this is a new vehicle and already it's uh, getting those waves inside and you also see those um, white dust particles it's because of the um, ventilation that the perforated structure uh, a lot of stuff gets stuck in there then some people <laughs> clean them one by one you know with those sticks you clean your teeth with <laughs> So instruments, the analog part, big RPM meter <laughs> is in the middle, classic Porsche. But left and right are screens. Left also for the digital speed. And the right one would be the one you rather control. Here, for example, the driving data. Uh, then see, as soon as I go to the GPS, it switches to both screens at the same time. Also when I'm approaching the next intersection or so. This one uh, would be then the night view assist. Um, well, at the moment we're facing a wall, so and it's daytime, so not really useful now. Uh, lap timer right there, G-force meter, tilting of the car, maybe for off-road use. Then the all-wheel drive distribution, tire pressure, and we will talk about this. You know, the, the, using those modes when we drive the vehicle. I will go through them, and then we can also see what's happening then on them. So, is soft close also available for the rear doors? Ta-da! Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's get in the rear compartment. First of all, and look in that, same style as in the front, and you already see there's a lot of room in there. The build quality is, of course, superb, as we expected from Porsche. See this handle here, in the lower part? I will talk about, well, there's a little bit loose, isn't it? Strange, just realized that. But it is actually a very handy handle. Nice alliteration. Let's get inside because, first of all, wow, you sit upright, very comfortable. You can, with this handle, then change the angle of the seats. You can really sit, you know, very upright if you like, like this. You can or have a leaning back sleeping position. And with this handle, you can also completely flip the seat. We'll take a look at how it looks like from the trunk. But the thing is, in my claim, um, you know, we recently had the Audi A8 in our review and sitting in an SUV in the rear is more comfortable than in a normal luxury sedan because you have the upright seating position as you would also probably sit at home and look at that, wow. I mean, the car is a little bit longer now from the exterior, but they've really gained a lot of knee room. You can easily use this vehicle as a chauffeur vehicle. So extremely comfortable for the rear passengers. With the panoramic roof, I have some more space above my head. So the headroom is okay here, for, even for tall passengers. Then again, if you are driving with even taller persons, then you should leave out the panoramic roof. Then you're a little bit more flexible. Um, the middle tunnel here, all-wheel drive, is actually quite big, but not too high. So you can also sit on the, in, on the middle part, but it's rather hard. So it's more designed for two persons in the rear. 
Isofix anchors left and right. And then here you can have cup holders and you can also use this one here as a ski hatch. Immediately turn down and reach through. So quite flexible here actually and also one of the reasons why uh, this one is among the most fa most popular Porsche vehicles because it also offers you the most versatility and most room for everything. And let's also take a detailed look then here to the temperature unit. Optional of course, four zone AC, temperature control, even seat heating and seat cooling for the rear seats. Hardly have seen that ever. And in the rear part also important all the kids have mobile phones nowadays, so you can USB charge them. And the lower part is again the smokers package. Um, I'm not sure if I would smoke in such an expensive vehicle, but if you like and you do not annoy anyone else with it, then it's of course your choice. You can also light up your stuff. And last but not least, you can also put the bench here forward. So you have more trunk space if you're not, you know, driving with people in the rear or maybe you have kids a little bit smaller, that's okay. And then you can have, you know, a little bit, a little bit less room here, but more room in the trunk. And <laughs> the wind is actually activating the rear door again. So it's, again, another point where this vehicle is very flexible. <laughs> so I, I make myself a parachute and I can fly away. So let's open the trunk. Right here, electric tailgate, takes some time of course, nice metal cover. This one here, I wonder about a little bit, it's not raising up automatically, it's a manual one. But then again, the advantage of a manual one is you can pretty fastly control it. You can also easily remove it right here with this handle. So that's also a nice solution like this. So, and then we have the full capacity right there. Below that, replacement tire optional available. Here's just the tire repair kit. Then on the left side, you have this net. You can store some random stuff. On the right side, you can, when you have the air suspension, also lower the vehicle, for example, to load things in easier. Some fixations right there, when you use them. And then we go around and flip the seats with those handles. Is this the maximum position? Yeah, it seems like like this. And also to the other side. Like this, and then you have really a lot of room available. Um, and of course, the other solution would be to still have it upright, but move the bench forward. And you can see you also gain some weight here or make it a little bit more upright. Um, here, Neil. This is uh, the space you have available. Overall, I think a lot to work with. And then it's also close the hatch. See about the security issue. Say Safe for safety. Whoa, that's a little bit harsh when you talk. So better watch out, you kids. So let's look under the hood. Let's talk about the engines. Ah, of course, hydraulic struts. Well, everything is covered basically. You cannot see so much. So I have to tell you more. This one here, the new entry petrol engine, replaces the naturally aspirated one. Here, three liter V6 one turbo, petrol 340 horsepower with a sports chrono package 5.9 seconds to 100. Then above that is the 2.9 liter, so a little bit less displacement, also V6, but then with a bi turbo, the second new V6 petrol, then 4.9 seconds to 100 because it has not only 340, but 440 horsepower. And then there's also the turbo already available, V8, 4 liter, 550 horsepower and 3.9 seconds to 100. So always a second less if you step up, but also price-wise, big differences. Here in German, reference prices, 75,000 entry price for this one here. Then above 90,000, 92,000 for the KNS and with the 2.9 liter and for the turbo 138,000. Wow. And I mean, that doesn't stand in any relation. 
Entry price in the US, by the way, for the new one, 65,000 US dollars. But in the US, you know, the price are without VAT. And in Germany, we state them with VAT, with Mehrwertsteuer. That's the difference and why the German price appear higher than the US prices. And later on, there will also be a hybrid. Maybe there, well, I mean, it's expected that we all see different hybrids, for example, V6 and the V8 hybrid. And yes, they also confirmed now there will be again a diesel, not necessarily in the US, but on the other markets where diesel was um, so far available, they will also reintroduce a diesel model at the later stage. And by the way, here to show you a different color in white and look at those 20 inch rims. I mean, 20 inches is really huge, but it looks so small on that vehicle. I mean, already the 21 inch rims on our vehicle look not too big, but here was 20 inch, really look small. Usually I always say go for smaller rims and you know, they don't damage the tires than that easily. But here I must say that 20 inch looks really small. And also interesting here on this vehicle, here the wheel arches are with black plastic to stress this crossover SUV look. You can also get an off-road package with another, um, you know, front lower bumper to protect the car. I would like to get your opinion, do you rather like it here with the plastic wheel arches, more SUV look, or do you prefer the more elegant approach where the wheel arches are painted in vehicle color? raw <laughs> we start this driving part of the all-new Porsche Cayenne. As I said earlier I intentionally picked the base petrol engine because this is the petrol engine that you have been buying well you know the base model it's a new engine uh, but the thing was most people went for the base petrol worldwide especially our friends in the US and I think it's always more important to show you know what's most relevant for the people really buying the car for you and not what you know what I think ah you know I want to drive the biggest horsepower variant version I think it's better to keep it real because it has you know, definitely more useful for you and the biggest difference from the previous engine version to this one here is the pure power 50 newton meter more. We've got a lot of room here. There's no one here. What shall we do? Maybe we can hammer the throttle and we can make it sport plus and go from zero because that's 5.9 seconds officially. Let's see what uh, we can score with that. Launch control. We gotta check that in the time code. Maybe if you watch the time code, check it. Maybe Jonas also will add a very fancy time code. He sometimes does that. I love that. <laughs> or maybe he has already done when you watch it. <laughs> yeah, it was really impressive. And at the same time, um, due to the all-wheel drive, you have a very even distribution also of the power. So that I can also tell you something about the consumption I will now reset the consumption meter because I mean acceleration tests is not really something which should count into uh, you know the real fuel consumption test yeah I mean this is really the big difference so before you had the naturally aspirated v6 now the v6 turbo with 340 horsepower 
40 horsepower more than before and 50 newton meter of torque more than before and that does make a massive difference so um, the v6 with the natural aspirated engine you had to kick it a little bit more get it rather to some more rpm this one here is um, so easily coming from all rpm range it's so effortless to drive you know i am also a fan of naturally aspirated engines still somewhat most manufacturers do get rid of them um, so you know that's just a fact that's that's the way it is again also the advantage is really that you just have more power more explosive ex uh, acceleration especially um, this all-wheel drive how does it work well it has a standard distribution of 40 in the front and 60 to the interesting the mirrors pretty easily done the electric so 40 front 60 percent in the rear uh, but it's basically constantly adjusting and we will show you how because here, for example, in the normal instruments, you see the normal small camera facing the front. When I'm approaching the next junction, I not only have the big GPS screen right there, because maybe, you know, someone wants to do code or wants to play with it. I also have it right in the instruments and the whole right screen is then covered with the GPS information showing me the next junction. And that's really good, uh, good function because it's adaptive you know you can use it for other um, information during that but as soon as the GPS is being approached there you have it so stop sign even if I just gently push it I mean I can already tell you right now you do not need any more power for this vehicle um, if you think about, ah, should I go for a KNS or for the turbo even? I mean, this one has so much power. It's already so sovereign to, to drive. Um, the only reason why you would need the S or the turbo is if you want to spend more money. That's basically the only reason. Acceleration-wise, yeah, I mean, they still made some differences. It's like with the Sport Chrono Package and the Launch Control, which we've shown you, by the way, Sport Plus mode, hammer the brakes, hammer the throttle, then the launch control is activated. It's 5.9, 4.9, 3.9 from KN, KNS, and KN Turbo. But with with this acceleration, you can wait. It's not a race car. It's not supposed to be a race car, even though the performance figures show that. But the main focus of this vehicle is also a sporty comfortable ride so in the SUV you have this upright seating position the super sovereign ride you are on top of the road you're king of the road you sit so high have a good overview to all of the sides windows are upright at the same time it's not this big SUV feeling where you feel like like a but a little stiffer as you're supposed to uh, have with the Porsche vehicle so you can have this sporty Porsche riding experience at the very same time this is you know the, the, the concept behind the KN which has been uh, boosting its sales ever since and maybe you know or let me tell you just right now meanwhile Porsche World World Sale two-third SUV so KN and Macan and one-third of pure sports cars so if you say Porsche is an SUV brand rather than a sports car brand you're right that's how you could describe it of course this one here is still following the sports car DNA this is what makes this car special and indeed handling wise and from the sovereignty of, of power and stuff by the way I'm driving you know as I'm supposed to 90 kilometers an hour when locals overtake us I will always drive the calling speed because my driving license is actually very crucial for my job, <laughs> if, you, if you can understand that. Um, now we can also test the cruise control. So it's the Porsche one always works a little bit different um, than the other ones. There is ACC, got included here. So 
let's set it, and it's also keeping the distance to the cars in front of me. The automatic emergency brake is from standard equipment. We do expect that by a car from this price range, also with a pedestrian recognition. Um, then you can optionally get so many more assistance systems. Um, you know, that's also something which is we were awaiting here for this for this very car. So that's also been a level stepped up from the previous generation. More assistance systems, definitely. By the way, normal mode. See how precise the steering wheel reacts to my command. It's a direct translation from the steering to the road, and that's so much fun. And you know, here on Crete, where we are today, you hardly have straight roads, which is good for car driving. And sometimes when you have huge SUVs, um, then it's not so much fun to really drive winding roads. But here with the Cayenne, it still is, and that's what this car is basically all about. By the way, they have also worked on the turning indicator, um, same with the Panamera. Um, it's still a little bit when you, when you not only, um, like when you tip it, it's like just for three indications, but when you want to make it longer like this, I think the resistance here in the turning indicator is still somewhat weird. It's, it is a little bit better than before, but still, I don't really understand why, you know, this is one thing you can really find with those Porsche vehicles, which is a little bit weird. So many things are so perfect and sporty and great and smooth and from sound and haptics, but the turning indicator, they don't really quite get it. So most of the times when I drive a Porsche, I don't, um, you know, really push the turning indicator all the way. I just use the click function because I don't want to have this strange resistance that built in there. I don't know really why. So, um, let's talk about those gauges in the front because not only water and oil temperature they show us, they can also show us, for example, the consumption. We'll talk about that later when we've driven a little bit further. And even a night view. It's starting to get a little bit darker here now and this is pretty impressive. I'm not really sure if I would really use it. I mean, you do have this um, this night vision then here, you can also see it on camera. Um, pretty fancy feature, optional of course. Um, I mean, I would always say it's just better to watch the road. Or what do you see? Do you have any experience with night vision? If someone has it in the vehicle, we'll be looking forward to that. You can start the stopwatch, you can have the G-force meter, you see the applied G-forces like in a 911. Um, the PDCC, the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, also shows the angle of the, you know, how the vehicle is leaning. And then my favorite feature in the front of the instruments are those all-wheel drive distribution figures. So there we can see, for example, that when I'm driving rather, let's say, slowly, more torque is distributed to the rear. So just a little to the front, I would say, like, at the moment, 10%, 15%, something, and really the most to the rear axle to ensure this sporty ride. And this is, of course, again, another key element for a Porsche vehicle. But what about this rear axle here today? Because, first of all, we got the air suspension built in. It has a three-chamber air suspension now. Before it was two, and also the air volume was increased. So. Porsche can play more with the, with the wide span between a soft suspension and a stiffer sport suspension. So in a normal mode, um, it's a very comfortable ride, but you already feel that it has a sporty setup, that's for sure. So what do you not have is this super soft air suspension ride, which you sometimes have in some uh, you know, Mercedes models, for example, you say, ah, you really like riding a, a carpet. You know, like wow, which is a great comfortable feeling, but you do not expect that when you want a little sportier ride. So the base setup is like the air suspension setup from a, let's say, Mercedes E43, for example, you know, where you have a AMG tuned air suspension. That's what you get from the base setup for this Porsche here, because it's combined to the brand. 
And then we also have in this vehicle the rear axle steering. So when we drive slower, then it goes across basically, so in the opposite direction of the front wheels when we drive. What is this? Come on. Yes. Is <laughs> what do you say here in Greece? So kudos to all our Greek viewers here today. Such a beautiful country with so beautiful islands. So F Sharisto for having us here. Wow, that was some Greek language course, wasn't it? <laughs> so let's go a little bit faster now and I'm more dynamic. Check out the rear axle steering and the thing is, you know, with a car that is this long and has this long wheelbase, it really makes sense. We also felt it with the Audi A8 and that gives you even more agility. So it is a coast intensive feature. If you are seeking something to make the car, first of all, lowering the turning circle in your everyday driving life, and at the same time making it more agile, then this is definitely a very good option. And it is surely the very good test track here also for a new Porsche Cayenne. This one, by the way, here the normal mode when it can take some time when to, 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 to the car to shift down. So if you want to improve that, you can also go to the driving mode selector at the steering wheel, go to the sport mode. And now, maybe also heard that the car is automatically shifting down. So it's shifting down faster and shifting up later. And then where, for example, here now in the corner, we can get faster out. Also, the air suspension is a little stiffened up then. And by this new air suspension, by the revised one, and the new rear axle steering, and the increased power of the new V6 engine, two new V6 engine, actually, the KNS2, you can make this large SUV feel smaller. That's what, you know, what the attention was, letting it feel more agile. I remember the last time I was driving a Cayenne GTS in the previous generation, which was also you know, a very fine-tuned vehicle. Mm, also very agile, considering its size. Here now again, they've stepped up the game even a little. Um, is the difference that much that you would say, I have to sell my current Cayenne immediately and change to the new one. No, I wouldn't say so, um, because the previous generation is already a great, big, sporty SUV. Um, you feel there's notable difference in all the improvements they've made here. But again, I see no hurry to say, let's put my previous game to the dumpster. You know, when you <laughs> want to change at some time anyway, I think you won't, will not be disappointed as all of the different disciplines have been, uh, you know, have made a little bit better even. You can also go to the Sport Plus mode. Then the suspension is even a little bit stiffer. We feel that it's getting a little bit bumpier now. At the same time, have more control over the vehicle. Even a little bit stiffer in corners. It's not what you would do to increase the very comfort of the car, but here in those winding roads, which are perfect to have also an entertaining view for you, that is then again a great choice. So let's enjoy that here together. You have seen sport chrome package in here. That's the reason we could also make the faster acceleration. Wow, how smooth the car is driving, although it is, you know, relatively high with the SUV, heavy as well. Um, they have saved across the lineup about 65 kilograms of weight. So, I mean, that's driving like with one person less or more in the car. So it's not too much they, they have saved in weight, but a little bit and this will hopefully help. So. What else can we see in the front here? Tire pressure as well. But then if we talk about consumption, driving sporty, and you remember, I did reset the trip meter 
after we've done the launch control and since then I mean those are riding roads and I'm doing you know not steady speed so this is bringing the consumption up for sure however the consumption is about at the moment over 15 liters on one kilometers mm, and I think that cannot exactly be you know, excused just by those winding roads. You have to take into consideration turbo is working and it is still a big heavy vehicle with a lot of wind resistance, with a lot of weight that has to be moved and so on. If you're driving this vehicle, you know, cruise control, straight line, highway, uh, sitting at whatever, 50 miles an hour or something, and of course, you can score low consumptions. Um, so I've, uh, you know, the, when, I, when I took the car, it was like this situation before, and then you can have some, you know, 10, 11 liters if you if you like. So, but you have to work for that basically. Um, so this one is something that is rather inevitable that the consumption is too high. I could have told you before, actually. Oh, great motocross bike, nice guy. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, you have this sovereign great ride, you have the abundance of power, I mean, what can you say? It's hard to combine this then with a low consumption, that's just, let's say, problems of physics. Uh, we can, uh, what we can do actually also is, uh, you know, maybe find some more spots to drive it more economically, which is not that easy on here on Crete on those winding roads but then I can also tell you maybe when I achieved some lower consumption so that about consumption it's getting a little bit darker here now but still a good view to the front screen also panoramic views to the sides so it's also a good vehicle to watch the landscape that's for sure and let's go back to the sport plus mode once more and I give you some minutes now also just to listen a little bit to to the motor sound to the winding roads in front of us now also with the led headlights that you can just enjoy some pure driving with me together and the older generation of the KN. let's go Squeaking, by the way, is from a trunk, just some luggage. <laughs> Nothing squeaking in this vehicle. So, driving to through a village, very nice. When we get out, I'll hammer it once more. Here, of course, we are careful. Sound insulation, by the way, is superb. You basically hear nothing from the outside. And the engine is also not too loud, it's also pretty well insulated of course and you can also use the shifting pedals if you like so if you for example prefer the more comfortable ride in normal driving mode which is more relieving and then say ah, I want to start an overtaking process I want to ride a little bit faster then shift down once or twice and then control it on your own Also, very well to use those pedals. So, some more nice corners for you. Wow, what a stability this vehicle giving us. And the roads are not that good, so we do have some bumps in here and shaking us a little bit but again the air suspension is evening it out very very well now the new brakes shifting 
it on myself. Straight. Very windy outside, but still very silent in here. It's nice to see this corner sign that an S road is coming ahead. So, back to second gear, we can accelerate out. Bam. So, what else do you want to know from driving the Onio Porsche Cayenne? I think we gave you a lot of insight and also all the new technology information. This is still, I think, benchmark as for the big SUV, as for the sporty riding. to our off-road driving part and there is a special off-road button you can also access it via the main menu but also but right there as a shortcut and then we can pick different modes gravel mud sand and rocks so this um, you know, changes how the electronics from distribution from the torque rear to front work also differentials and so on everything electronic um, nowadays and you can also change the chassis height, so um, we, we can really put it higher, for example, high and also terrain. Here, well, it's a gravel road now, high. Maybe you've seen it also on camera. The car is pumping it itself up, y'all. Uh, really funny, of course. Then we can, let's say, wait, what is it? I would say it's gravel, right? So then off-road mode for gravel active. And let's go. Of course, good to have even more ground clearance than with the air suspension. So if you're going off-road, the air suspension is uh, really the most important feature for your comfort. And of course, also that the car does not get any damage. And well, those are some gravel roads here right now. So beautiful, definitely also landscape-wise. They are great off-road tracks on Crete. Um, before anyone says no, that's not real off-road, yeah, it is a gravel road. So there are of course harder off-road tracks. Um, however, I don't think that, uh, you know, when you buy a Porsche Cayenne that you would typically go the hardest off-road trails with it. Or what do you think? So, I mean, it's of course rather noisy now from the gravel, but still car shows a very comfortable driving still considering the underground and that's again due to the um, due to the air suspension oh there's a road road blockade <laughs> by another Porsche Cayenne <laughs> but they'll surely make some room for us they're also filming here colleagues <laughs> carry on further. Wow, what a scenic road here. Amazing, really amazing. And you know, for this type of stuff, the Cayenne is still really suitable. However, I have to say, if you have an air suspension that is not set on a sporty ride, but more on a very comfortable ride, thinking about, let's say, you know, a Mercedes GLE, for example, it is more comfortable. So you always feel that here in the Cayenne, we have the sporty setup also from the air suspension and uh, so there are more comfortable off-road cars they are more capable off-road cars uh, but on the road in the agile performance there's hardly anything that can really beat the KN. so that's you know where where the focus definitely is um, from the overdrive drive distribution we can also check that one out let's see in the gauges it's always great so in the off-road mode here, for example, we have a more even distribution front and we like 50-50. That is what the off-road mode is changing. That's of course important when you're having some uphills and also with 
gravel and stuff that you can easier get up without any wheel spin. Also when I push the throttle here a little bit more now, I can see the all wheel distribution remains the same. So this is you know the the off-road setup you get then and if I would have the standard street setup here for example I would have had more wheel spin than um, at the rear wheels for example. Of course then again nowadays the modern cars they adapt that well to the situations also with the modern all-wheel drives that theoretically you can just leave any off-road modes and just drive the normal mode and most of the obstacles will be handled anyway. This is just here to optimize a little more and you know, when the off-road part is a little bit harsher. So, VKN can also be used for gravel, rocks and mud to some extent and it's still fun but definitely you could feel it. It's rather home on the road for sure. And now to our conclusion all new generation of the Porsche Cayenne. Well from the exterior it looks sleeker than before, a little bit more elegant, even a little sportier. Then from the interior you have a cleaned up interior with less buttons, more infotainment, looks all quite fancy and we know when you have some experience you can also even better control this infotainment system you get used to it actually quite fast what is missing are of course more sustainable seating materials we have to wait for the gts models there or use the porsche exclusive manufacturing a lot of room on the interior especially even a good chauffeur car that is also something which is remarkable not often said in suv car reviews and for sure still the Porsche with you know the most flexibility versatility room on the interior there's also now the Panamera Sport Turismo um, which is also really handy if you have a family but this one of course you know gives you a lot what you can actually choose from when you want to you know get some luggage or family inside and driving experience well still sets the benchmark in the big SUV segment this one here has so much agility already in the base model version. Then your rear, rear axle steering, fine adjustment of the optional air suspension. That one gives you more agility and comfort at the very same time. The base setup remains really very sporty and that's what Porsche customers also do expect from this vehicle. Consumption wise, it should be lower and well, we tried really to get it a little bit lower but um, you're always way in the two digit figures of course it's a big vehicle can hardly do anything about it but when you soon can get the hybrid this one then will be a possibility to get this consumption down as we saw already in the Panamera it works also when you not only refilling it all the time even just when it's running and recuperating while driving it already makes sense then to go for the hybrid maybe also to replace the diesel at some point because diesel sales will surely drop a little bit for this vehicle germany will still be a major diesel market still but i think more and more people will also then go for the hybrid later in general the base petrol engine is so powerful you've seen the launch control yes you can have a little bit better acceleration even with the you know with a more horsepower engine than also with the turbo but then again if you look at the price the base model is of course also the best offer. This one here with a lot of extras here today because they never give us any base models which are really pure base. But then again with the base engine you can keep the price at the lowest. It's already an expensive vehicle and it's not really worth to go for a turbo just if you say you know I don't care about the money at all. So those ones were my advice here for today. I would like to hear your opinion on this vehicle exterior interior and what we present you while driving and also tune in to our very next Autogofuel episode. Thank you so much for supporting us.